In demonstrating the long road to Yorktown, our next stop is in Charleston, South Carolina, which was captured by the British in May 1780, after repeated attacks since the beginning of the war. Apparently frustrated by his lack of success in the northern colonies, General Henry Clinton, commander of British forces, decided that the southern colonies would provide more victories. He had set sail from New York with 8,000 British troops and began his assaults through the port of Charleston. Charleston is a wonderful place to ride a bicycle. At almost every turn, one can see the history in the buildings and landmarks that have withstood many years and many conflicts. General Clinton actually returned to New York shortly after his arrival and left General Cornwallis in charge of the Southern Campaign. Henry Clinton and myself, in that we have demanded an oath of loyalty from you good people. Charleston provided one of the few roads leading inland, which avoided so many of the swamps located throughout the South. Those who are not for us must be considered against us. And I'm sure that none of you will have any problems whatsoever in taking the oath of loyalty to the crown. 1780 saw repeated British attacks further inland. At the end of May, British forces decisively won the Battle of Waxhaw Creek. In June, Patriot forces beat the Tories at Ramsers Mill. During this time, however, George Washington was struggling with his Continental Army in New Jersey. There were uprisings resulting from soldiers not being paid. General Washington not only resolved the problems, but turned his soldiers' anger against the British to gain a victory at the Battle of Springfield in June 1780. At this point, there should be no surprise that Nathaniel Green was there at Springfield to help lead the army to victory. It is little wonder that when General George Washington learned of the British campaign in the South, that he sent Nathaniel Green to take command of Southern forces. Also, during the summer of 1780, there were other important developments. 6,000 French soldiers under Count Rochambeau arrived in Newport, Rhode Island. They remained there for nearly a year before heading south to assist the Continental Army. Additionally, it was during the summer of 1780 that General Washington learned about Benedict Arnold and his secret collaboration with the British. Arnold, who had been Patriot commander at West Point, narrowly escaped capture and then switched sides to fight for the British. 
1780 was indeed a year full of turning points in the war. Back in the South, we had crucial battles at Hanging Rock and Camden. Defeated the rebel scum as always. I understand there's a difference between the northern and southern campaigns. After Brandywine especially, my, I re-looked at what the overall war strategy would be. Uh, not so much in terms of tactics in battle, uh, but in terms as the ultimate goal, how we would achieve it. And the, the real goal, of course, is to win the war. Whether or not you win battles uh, it is a, a different question. Certainly we want to win battles, but winning a battle doesn't necessarily mean you win the war, and neither does losing one. My overall strategy was to make this a protracted war, to drag it out for as long as was as possible, because I was convinced that whilst we could eventually hold out, if I could keep the faith and morale of the American people up and we could get enough money and materiel to supply the army, I knew the British were under much more uh, difficult constraints in that all of their men and supplies had to come from England. The battle at Kings Mountain was a victory for mountain men who simply would not tolerate British rule. This battle had serious consequences as the western flank of British forces were effectively destroyed. This is Kings Mountain in South Carolina. We're on a walking trail. It's one and a half miles long. They don't allow bicycling. And the battle took place right up ahead here. This is a monument where the British were camped out. The British didn't think they could be attacked here. The mountain men used guerrilla tactics and superior marksmanship to kill Major Patrick Ferguson and a majority of British forces in that region. This is in memory of Colonel Patrick Ferguson. So how did your strategy change? Well, the strategy changed for a couple reasons. Uh, one, we knew we weren't strong enough in most cases to stand up uh, and do a full frontal assault against the British Army. Uh, probably at Monmouth, we were as good as we were going to get, and that was definitely feasible. However, it really changed because we had gotten word of the French involvement in our war. That meant we would be getting professionally trained soldiers, money, which is always needed to run a war, and war materiel and, and things as simple as clothing. Many of our soldiers, you understand, were never adequately clothed. Uh, so that definitely impacts on what the strategy will be. Toward the end of 1780, as Nathaniel Green takes command of American forces in the South, he begins a strategy to wear down the British. He also used deception as a tactic, especially at the Battle of Cowpens. It was there General Daniel Morgan instructed his troops to fire only two shots and then retreat, which tricked the British cavalry into an attack where they were severely beaten. This 
This is Cal Penn's Battlefield in South Carolina. That's the battlefield over there on our left. There's more battles after this. The Battle of Calpins actually took place in January 1781. General Washington's plan of dragging out the war and outmaneuvering the British Army was now working. General Greene followed the plan to the letter, and that is to stay just far enough ahead of uh, General Cornwallis and to lead him deeper and deeper uh, into the hinterland away from his supply chain and his ships uh, wear his army down and this is exactly what he did he kept me informed constantly by courier uh, so that I was always well aware of what was going on in the effort and I knew that he was uh, leading the British army uh, toward Williamsburg the next major battle was at Guilford Courthouse, North Carolina, in March 1781. This was Cornwallis against Green, and the outcome was not entirely clear. Although the British claimed victory, they lost an enormous number of soldiers. The Americans lost very few. Guilford Courthouse has a wonderful network of trails to see where the battles took place. Music